Hi everybody, welcome to the program and uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear us. And for those people that have been sticking with us for the past 10 minutes while we've been fixing things up, thank you very much. I'm just going to uh, put that back so it's on us. Okay, moving on. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about today and uh, you've been diving during the week? Yes, so I work on uh, the friendship boat that is owned and operated by Dive Cove located in Shark Bites uh, in Nyharn, Phuket. You can find them on Soy Sayuan. Right next to it, conveniently located, is the Stoned Crab Pub, also on the same road, right next door. And that's where you can get your daily dose, if need be, of alcoholic beverages and your live sports entertainment. So um, we're just going to have a quick look at what some of the uh, the papers say today. Uh, now we go to Thai PBS World, and th they've got all sorts of different headlines. The Thai PM there celebrating Songkran on Khao San Road. <laughs> Um, gee, I think there's an election on the way, Nick. Uh, we've got uh, seven of Thailand's political parties unveil their environment policies. I wonder if anything refers to what's happening up there in the north. Khao San Songkran celebrations to end at 10 p.m. on Friday night, not midnight. So uh, if you're heading to Khao San Road, you'll be finished by 10 tonight. And Thailand among most improved countries in which to do business, according to the EIU. Wonderful. Um, and if we check with the Bangkok Post, their main headline refers to one million baht reward. That's a funny way to write one million baht, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, on election sheets. And just uh, quickly checking with that story, it says that the election commission is offering up to one million baht to anyone who can provide evidence of electoral corruption, including vote buying. That'd be the washing machine. It sounds like a jet trying to take off. Uh, so uh, other stories in the Bangkok Post today. Uh, it's cutting through the ads here. And a TikTok star in race to be a Songkla MP. You've got something to say about TikTok a bit later? A bit later, yeah, not yet. Okay. Let's the headlines first. <laughs> so I would have thought uh, being a TikTok star is giving you a bit of a... Uh, uh, a bit of a head start because you've already got that sort of social media thing half organized. Sure. Um, could you raise my volume a little bit on the monitor? Everyone's uh, saying that I'm much quieter than you or that you're just loud. You <laughs> uh, Generally, I am louder, um, but not as tall. So uh, disease control goes high tech and just checking what that story is about just says that eye and facial recognition technology will be used in a pilot project aimed at improving healthcare services for foreign workers, refugees and ethnic people in five provinces. So uh, that's just some of the stories there in some of the papers today. And I mean, let's face it, most of the journalists are away at the moment. Mm -hmm. So there's not as much news around because yeah. Songkran uh, on Thursday principally some places still uh, celebrating today, uh, yesterday and today. Patong, especially. Is Patong <laughs> still going? They still go. They go all the time. They were going the day before Songkran as well. Well, I know up in Pattaya, there's a party that goes for four or five days. So anybody up there in Pattaya, can you tell us uh, what's been happening there with Songkran and how the celebrations are going? So uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. I'm going to snip off that uh, bit at the front from earlier. And we want to go to your questions because you did ask a lot of questions uh, before the program. And we'll get to those now. Here we yes. go. So from uh, the poll that we held about uh, 19 hours ago, Paul Summer asks, if the supply of agricultural equipment will resolve the pollution problem in northern Thailand, why can this not be funded by the crop buyers and the sources that suffer, such as the tourist and health departments and whatnot? Uh, well, um, I think, and I'd be really interested in everybody's solutions to what's happening with the agricultural problems, uh, the agricultural smoke, because uh, we are in the sort of the dying phases of this year's uh, burning off season. Mm -hmm. Having said that, the last week it's been as bad as it's been for the past uh, couple of months. B but I think it should be... Uh, in the wane but what are we going to do in the future because we've identified that a lot of this smoke is coming from Laos and Myanmar well yeah. in addition to that uh, if if ASEAN or ASEAN as some people say had any power they could prevent companies buying the crops unless they were grown environmentally surely this would be cheaper in the long run 
Yeah, look, I, I think a lot of people would be sort of applying their logic and even their Western thinking to and the idea of cooperating governments mm-hmm. to help solve this. And in a different part of the world, I'd say, yeah, that would be an idea. ASEAN at the end of the day is a trade block. And so they may be able to apply some sort of trade related pressure on Laos and Myanmar. Laos and Myanmar are, are both, uh, well, one is a, run by a communist government and the other one's run by a military <laughs> junta at the moment. So it's not as if they're in their most uh, cooperative, states. cooperative sort of states that they could be. And Thailand, leading up to an election, they're just going to say anything to get the votes and uh, then forget about it after the election. So put all that together, I think you've got qu- a quite a complex problem as far as uh, sanctions or anything. Within Thailand this year, there has been less burning, palpably and measurably less burning. But we've seen day after day that the big problems are mostly coming from uh, Laos and uh, Western Myanmar. And depending on where the wind's blowing, it uh, blows into Northern Thailand or down into Bangkok. And today, we've certainly got a good dose of it here sure. in Phuket. I haven't checked, I might just uh, do that while you are having a, a quick comment there. Meanwhile, uh, I think we've already covered it enough. We can get back to the, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, okay. it's bad here it's, today. It's pretty bad today. So just checking, uh, blah, 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 blah. Well, Chiang Mai makes it to number two in the uh, so worst polluted cities. Yeah, Chiang Mai number two this morning. Now we also, we're looking at Phuket here and we can see a northwesterly airflow and uh, we've got, uh, well, quite high levels. Usually it's uh, green or yellow, which is good or moderate, but we've got quite a few areas today, even in Phuket which are regarded as unhealthy. Now, that's not a common thing we see down here. Yeah. Let's go to, uh, to a wider map and have a look at other parts of Thailand. And uh, we'll just come up the Gulf of Thailand. And we'll look at that uh, around Bangkok. Uh, and we've got Pattaya there, Hua Hin. Looks like Hua Hin might be uh, around about a, f- a four. Uh, which is extremely low. I think there's something wrong with that monitoring station. Uh, but Bangkok, very, very uh, poor air quality there today. And I hazard to mention it's going to be even worse when we Let's go... Let's look at uh, Chiang Mai. Oh, boy. Yeah, look at the colour up there. We've got the dark purple and the dark red. And some of those uh, measuring stations around the border up at the what they call the hazardous level. So extremely high levels of uh, PM 2.5 today in a lot of Thailand, not just up in the north, but certainly central Thailand, generally it gets better as you go south. But it uh, doesn't really zoom particularly well on this iPad. Can I zoom in there? It doesn't really work very well. Because you're holding the pen as well. You go. Maybe if I... You see, it zooms rather than... I know, but if you hook the pen up to the top again, now it'll be okay to control with your fingers. And I see it does the same thing. Anyway, you get the <laughs> idea. Right. It's, uh, and you can see the fires there. Look at the fires there in Laos. And uh, up there, we've got basically a... Um, yeah, well, you pretty much paints the picture. So what, what are people saying about all that? So Frank in Thailand says, The Bangkok Post made a great article on the 12th uh, talking about uh, how the budget problems and why they can't find money to help uh, reduce this problem. And particularly, uh, and someone asks, uh, KJ asks, why does the burning seem particularly bad this year? What well, we've already said, it's not just Thailand burning, but also Laos and Myanmar. Uh, John Swift mentions that the sugarcane has an export value of one third of tourism, and that is only Thailand to Myanmar. And without tourist numbers, it counts for most of the exports. How are you going to fund that? Well, I think um, the, the sugarcane and the corn, they're some of the main crops that are burned up there. And their economic impact of doing anything to the burning off is obviously going to be significant. Now, a lot of these farmers have got contracts with uh, multinational companies like uh, CP All, and these companies don't want the contracts to get any more expensive, Mm -hmm. of course. But somewhere along the line, these companies and I would imagine these governments are going to have to start throwing some money at agricultural equipment so they can uh, till this stuff back into the soil and have better agricultural practices. At the end of the day, that's the only thing that's going to solve it because we still need the crops, we need the food. These companies don't want to reduce their bottom line, but they're going to have to find some other way 
other than burning off because if it's just one farm having a burn off, eh, not a big problem. But when you've got thousands of farms doing it for months and months on end, it becomes a huge problem, such that this is the worst air pollution, the worst smoke, the worst agricultural burning problem in the world each year. And uh, it's affecting, imagine what's, how it's affecting the lives of people up well, there in the north. When I was just there in Chiang Mai not too long ago, getting my Chinese visa, it was absolutely horrible the moment you stepped off the airplane. It was a complete haze all the way into Pai as well, uh, the entire time. And it was just disgusting, really. So uh, Douglas Robin Barker says, to cur curtail the air crisis in the kingdom, the government must consider closing the border with Lao until the Lao government take proactive pressure to suppress the apparent uh, out of control burning. Build a wall. Uh, and make Laos pay for that. So yeah, what do you do? Do you stop trade with Laos? So do you stop trade with Myanmar? Uh, what's the biggest trade we do with Myanmar? I'd suggest... <laughs> <laughs> some, <laughs> some illicit substances. Yes, it might be uh, crops <laughs> other than uh, the ones we've been talking about. Uh, so I, I think it's a really big problem. But I do note that uh, the actual number of fires in Thailand this year, up in the north of Thailand, is fewer than what we've had in the past. The big problem this year seems to be the wind direction or whatever, bringing a lot of the smoke from, uh, from principally northern Laos. Mm -hmm. So uh, any other thoughts uh, about this? Well, we're, we're trying to solve the problem. <laughs> Carletto asks, does Udon Thani have bad air quality? And looking at the map, Udon Tani, we just got to go down a little bit down it's here too. It's still pretty. Yeah, it's sort of up bad. in the what we call the unhealthy. So northeastern Thailand uh, really suffering again from these uh, these fires in places like Laos. Um, I could bring up the fire. Do you want me to bring up the fire maps? We can see specifically where the fires are. Uh, oh, I didn't go to the map. That's silly me. So I go to the uh, fire maps. You can just talk amongst yourselves <laughs> while I'm doing this. The burning, uh, Thomas mentions, the burning was almost completely stopped by legislation in the state of Louisiana. A company named John Deere has cane c uh, cutter that cuts stacks and mulches waste. The sugar cane is cut into tiny pieces, I assume. It's really interesting. You don't see a lot of John Deere tractors uh, over here. It's mainly, um, I don't see a lot of Hino tractors or generally. Komatsu that okay. come in here, like Japanese tractors. Okay. I did um, mm -hmm. a, a, an event years ago for a company called Deutz Fahr who made uh, really amazing German tractors. I think they were quite expensive. Tractors, tractors are tractor. expensive. Tractors are expensive. So we're going to the NASA fire maps now, but look at uh, Southeast Asia. It's just <laughs> lit up like a Christmas tree. And we go to Northern Thailand. And uh, this is the situation live, showing the, the live fires that are there now. I'll just uh, come down a little bit. Do you want to go in a little bit further? So we can see that, uh, yes, there are plenty of fires in northern Thailand, but a lot more fires in uh, northern Laos and also in the western part of Myanmar. That uh, whole Golden Triangle area, they're really lit up, Nick. But if we go down to uh, the northeast Thailand, then uh, hardly any much. fires at all. Yeah. Uh, down into Cambodia, bugger all fires. Uh, and just a little bit down the western side of the uh, the Thailand border, but yeah, really up here is the well, look, look at uh, the eastern part of Myanmar as well. That's even worse than anything. That would be causing a lot of uh, air pollution in places like Dhaka and uh, yeah, around Yungon. Bangladesh. So that's uh, the the situation. So that is a live fire map. Uh, let's go to other people's uh, Other people's thoughts. questions. Marcus, the hippie in disguise, asked, uh, do you think Thailand will ever allow tourists to do camper van tours, having GPS tracking in the van on your phone so to stop over staying and any other visa requirements? I have seen hippies in Volkswagen vans doing it before. <laughs> I think that it doesn't have a, a sort of a camper van culture, Thailand. No. There's no reason why it shouldn't. I think uh, it's generally fairly safe to, to travel around Thailand. The, the main roads are, are very good. Very nice, but the driving you know, standards here aren't as... Well, well, once you're out on those main roads, though, and you're doing a, you know, 100K or more, 
Uh, generally, I think the, the, the driving's okay. Yes, um, you just got to get into the rhythm of Thai driving rather than your own particular rhythm from where you come from. I, however, I do think it'd be a little bit difficult to maneuver. Like, let's say once you get onto the main road and now it's going into a city, uh, maneuvering with all the motorbikes and whatnot, if you were in a 40-foot coach, that's a different story. Yeah, because uh, obviously in some other countries, places like Australia, you don't have a lot of motorbikes mm -hmm. around. Uh, here in Thailand, you do have a lot of motorbikes, but generally they're going to keep do their best to keep out of your way. Uh, it's just going to be... They still make turn. They still try to pass you on the left if you have your signal on, indicating that you're going to turn into a gas station. That applies to anybody, uh, not just if you're in a big RV but also uh, in a sort of a standard sedan. But I think um, th there's no reason why Thailand shouldn't have a bit more of a, a camping culture. The thing is, at the moment, there's no infrastructure. So there's none of these caravan parks. There's no places where you can stop overnight, plug in, mm -hmm. have a shower, uh, you know, collect your thoughts and have a rest and then get and going. And where you would day. dump your wastewater as well. Y yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, there's no places for that sort of stuff. Um, but so it's really the, the lack of infrastructure that's stopping you doing it at the moment. Mm -hmm. There's no other reason. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just, you can't see RVs on, you know, secondhand RVs for sale. You just don't see them around. But if you did want to do sort of that type of thing and you were really well organised and organised where you were going to stay each night and maybe you had to go and stay in a small hotel just so you could have a proper shower and sort of plug in, you could certainly do it, and my goodness, what a beautiful country to uh, to explore that way. Yes. And Alfred Bravo asks, did the Taiwanese actress ever get back her 27,000 baht? Your future wife. My future wife, yeah. So what happened uh, between you and her? Just uh, did she, she didn't like the way that I hung out outside her apartment building every day in Taiwan. For a know. week. Yeah, I don't know why she, yeah. she, she got annoyed by that. What was written on your sign? It was, please marry me yeah yeah that would worry me <laughs> so uh i don't know we didn't hear much more did she get that she paid apparently a some twenty six thousand baht fine did she get that back i, I think what I, happened to the police it, i don't know the police I, are happily heard. retired <laughs> well, they were they were assigned mm. to desk jobs mm. which is the routine way of um sort of shuffling aside naughty police Nick has a nice suntan, says Ian McNamee. Yes, we have referred to uh, Nick's uh, glowing visage at the moment because <laughs> he's working outdoors all the time. Yes. The national parks are great spots for camping, says Love in Thailand. Uh, yes, but can you park a, an RV or a caravan in those national parks? I don't know no, if that's I legal. No, I don't think so. Because it's, it's not like the States or I guess Australia as well where you do have a designated picnic camping area within the park and then you hike to all the different sure places uh like in australia the, the camping culture the uh the um, caravan culture is huge such that it's sort of a bit of a rite of passage for people once they retire or get over 60 is they buy a caravan and they go for the the ubiquitous trip around australia mm -hmm. which is a long long way given that the continent of australia's bigger than the United States I think yeah so if you're going to drive around that and there's a road that goes right around a very very good road and quite spectacular but um, what are they called the the gray nomads who uh, head out and uh, tackle the roads but so, yeah that's you just I don't think you can do that here in Thailand no I don't think so but it's so it's a similar thing in the States as well where it is kind of common for retired couples to go in their camper van go to Yellowstone look at the geyser oh we're going to Glacier National Park next and do all that kind of fun stuff and it, it seems very nice GTV says I think camper style vans and motorhomes will move Thailand further away from its natural beauty so-called hippie style camping I think is of the original nomad and should remain as close to that yeah I mean if you want to bring in a, um, a VW <laughs> A camper van thing you can do it but you're going to have to be a bit more organized and find out where you're going to be getting rid of the waste and uh, rubbish and having showers and stuff jason finch says that uh i look well done and that you tim look medium rare thank you <laughs> i'm both uh, medium height and quite rare 
Yes. USA has one million square miles more than Australia. Thank you very much for Bob. Yeah, I think you forgot about uh, Alaska. Alaska. Yeah. Or Florida. Everybody forgets about Florida. Well, Florida isn't really that large, but I mean, Alaska is sizable. Yes. <laughs> so are you d- including Alaska, uh, Bob B? I knew somebody would fact check me on that. Uh, Abe Froman says, Nick, you should have had a boom box and played the song In, In Your, Your Eyes. Eyes by Peter Gabriel <laughs> under her window. She would have melted for you. <laughs> you didn't think about that? I didn't, I didn't think about it, no. should have I asked Abe first. I didn't, yeah, I didn't think about uh, Peter Gabriel. I was actually playing uh, Def Leppard, and uh, maybe that's where I went wrong. <laughs> uh, okay. How about houseboats for cheap living in Phuket? Well, this is a bit of an extension of the idea of sort of... Um, uh, what do they call those, uh, those vans would have fitted out as a home? There was Winnebago's. Oh. <laughs> the brand became the thing. It's a bit like Hoover. Was, is, uh, well, we, still, is we say name. vacuum cleaner. Yeah, well, we don't Hoover, Hoover was a brand, and sort of my mother said, oh, I've got to Hoover the carpet. But yeah, we do say Band-Aids, because that's the brand and not plaster. And we do say Tupperware for everything to uh, plastic, because that's the brand. Okay. Yeah. When you say we, you're taking... Referring to my fellow Americans. <laughs> your United States uh, background. <clears throat> was Nick playing two steps behind? Uh, Bob B. Uh, Bob B's on to, onto this. Uh, uh, he, he says it's six hundred and sixty-five thousand square meters. Miles. M- square miles. Oh yes, probably. Uh, so yeah, is are you talking about continental United States or including Alaska? Well, I think if you're on that website where you can click and drag a country to move it onto others to compare the size, oh. because of the way that the Earth is projected onto maps, right. it looks bigger. I see, I yeah. see. Okay. Uh, anyway, I didn't... Uh, what's the capital of Alaska? Anchorage. I would have said Anchorage. Yeah, I think, I think it's Anchorage. I'm not really... Uh, that's the cleaner. I'm not really into knowing much more about... Uh, Alaska. Capital of New York is an interesting one. What do you think the capital of New York is? New York. The capital of Albany. New- Albany. Well, there you go. I would thought go. it was New York, New York. What's the capital of California? Oh, it's Juneau is the capital of <laughs> Alaska. Sorry, just Anchorage is the bigger city. My bad. What's the capital <laughs> of uh, California? Um. Oh, that's Sacramento. It is too. Yeah. Good. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to take anybody on uh, with the United States uh, general trivia. Also, I think my father is on my uh, YouTube account. Question. If we forget the triviality of the slash and burn policy that inconveniences people a bit, then spare a thought for the people of Burma who are suffering massively under the military. Uh, well reported too, by the way, uh, each year uh, by myself. And I, it's a, a topic I hold uh, quite close to me. And I do report it, but yeah, we're not, of course, forgetting the problems of the people in uh, Myanmar at the moment and the horrific situation and the refugee situation up on the Thai border, up around Mesot and northwestern Thailand. Uh, a lot of Burmese flooding across the border, and the Thai army are on post, pretty much just uh, arresting them and throwing them back over the border. That's the situation at the moment in Thailand. Long term, it's intolerable, but I'm not exactly sure how they're going to solve that. And of course, during the election, the issue of the Thai-Burmese border and the military junta running Myanmar is not being discussed at all. Such is what happens during elections. (laughs) Wonderful. Um, Are we still going through the uh, questions and comments from the poll? Yes, more questions and comments. These were questions that people posted yesterday after I posted uh, an an opportunity for people to uh, pre-post some questions or comments. Chris Mackin asks, uh, Hi to Nick, look forward to the show, but um, because I'm out of the time zone, I can't tune in live, and I wanted to ask a question. Uh, I made a reference last week to a story uh, discussion involving airports or airlines slash favorite airports. There was no follow-up as we got sidetracked by comments, but he's really interested in uh, hearing our thoughts on what the best airports slash airlines are. In in this region? I think all over the world. Well, I mean, I'm not a a world-weary traveler, so I can't comment beyond... You've been uh, to Louisiana and Mississippi. Well, back in the 90s. (laughs) I don't think any of the airlines that I flew on then are still flying. I think I had a 17-hour flight from Melbourne to Los Angeles 
on a Boeing 747. This is back in early 90s. It's a long time to sit in a seat. Economy, of course. Uh, but in this region, there is a lay down Mazaire, uh, easy number one airport. It, it's not even a. a really? Oh, by far the best airport in Asia by a long way, by a country mile, is Changi. Changi yeah. Airport in Singapore. It's exceptional. It's an experience. It's a, a place you, it's like a destination in itself. Uh, it's got that whole garden area in the middle. The waterfall in the, the middle waterfall. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's so many places you can rest. Uh, you can watch movies. Uh, they've got... Uh, Playstations available to just yeah. use. Showers. Places for, uh, for yeah. kids. Uh, it really is so well decked out. I can't believe that it's all carpeted. Yeah. Somebody's going around each day and cleaning those carpets. Wow. It's always immaculate and clean. Uh it's easy to get around. Very you have helpful. the uh, t- uh, tram that takes you from terminal to terminal as well. They've got I mean, three terminals now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's great. So Changi Airport, I can't think of any airport in Asia. That My comes favorite airport? Anywhere near that. I'm going to... Jeez. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to say... Uh, I'm going to say uh, Detroit. Detroit Airport. Okay. I've never <laughs> been there. Well, no. Apparently it's... <laughs> no, I'm just joking. My favorite one, it might be Korea, uh, Incheon, actually. Incheon Airport is very, very nice as well. Better than Changi? They're both really good, except okay. Incheon's not carpeted, so... <laughs> uh, now, as far as the worst airport in Southeast Asia, anyway, is concerned... Jakarta. I don't like Jakarta Airport. No, Jakarta's... You've got five terminals, and the bus service isn't really good, and it's just a... It's hell to navigate that airport. Okay, I haven't been there since about uh, 2001 was the last time I was at Jakarta uh, Airport. I don't, I don't like no, Jakarta Airport. it was 2000... What the hell is that? It's a frog. That would or be a couple. the cat annoying Cat frog, eating a frog, no yeah. doubt. <laughs> um, uh, no, it was 2004 because I was in Jakarta when the tsunami hit. Oh. And they oh. were talking about uh, a tsunami coming to, to Jakarta. But, uh, of course, it didn't get that far. But uh, so it was 2004, I was at Jakarta Airport. But the worst airport is, uh, I, it's named after, I, I think, uh, Nino Aquino. Nino Aquino. But it's the Manila Airport. It's oh. dreadful. And so is uh, just everything about the airport. The, the help, uh, the, the layout, everything is just appalling at Manila Airport. My two cents. A pan mentions Nick Detroit Midway or O'Hare. Well, isn't O'Hare Chicago? Yeah, I thought O'Hare, O'Hare is yeah, O'Hare Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. No, uh, it was a joke. Obviously, Detroit is not one of my favorite airports. <laughs> uh, O'Hare Airport was the, where the, the worst civil aviation disaster in America it was a un- I thought that was United Airlines DC-10 uh, took off. One of the engines flew off the wing as it was oh. taking off, and it when banked and, and crashed. Oh, this would be back in the 1990s. Oh, uh, when you were like o- o- here, I'll type in, just read out a comment and I'll read up <laughs> about it. Okay. We should be talking about uh, airline crashes. Uh, okay. Um, Thai Dog says Bangladore Air- uh, bang, bang. Bangalore Airport is definitely on my list of bad airports. And Jason mentions the Taipei Airport is very nice. Yes, uh, I have been to the Taipei Airport as, ni- as well. That's very nice. Hong Kong Airport is also pretty nice. Yes, the Hong Kong Airport, at Interest- least very well yeah. organized. Interestingly, I do not really like uh, Dubai Airport. I feel like it's... Would be big. It's huge, I'm but sure it's also it like empty most of the time. And it's... Soulless. Soulless, exactly, yeah. It, like KL Airport. Changi has like a nice oh, flair a, to it. feels like you're in your yeah. living room. Dubai feels... It's so luxurious, it's soul-eating. It's know, it's uh, happened on sucking. May the 25th in 1979. A McDonnell Douglas DC-10 crashed. It was American Airlines Flight 191. Oh, wow. And there it is just moments before, um, yeah. Wow. The engine departing the wing as they took off. Not a good look for uh, if you're in a Jeez. plane. So, uh, yes. Hmm. That's where I sort of became aware of and remember O'Hare Airport. Uh State airports, uh, we don't have a lot of nice airports in the States. JFK is kind of disgusting. LAX is also, it's okay. 
it's all right. Uh, but I'd say every time I go to LAX, and I used to pass through there, sort of the gateway for anybody coming from Australia mm. in the early days. I think now they fly to Dallas as well. But uh, always used to fly through LAX to to get to other parts of the US, which I used to frequent back in the nineties. Uh, I always ran into somebody I knew at LAX airport. Really, every single time it became a a thing. Oh, hi, how are you? Haven't seen you for 10 years. Probably will never see you again. But hi. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah, I like Minneapolis, though. I'd say it's one of the better uh, United States airports. I'd say Minneapolis and Chicago O'Hare. Yeah. DK57, mm-hmm. Nick is American, question mark? That's why I'm so eloquently spoken. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He's half American, mm-hmm. half Thai. Well, we're not quite sure. Yeah, we don't. We have done half Thai. And how about the best Thai airport? The best Thai airport. That's a really good question, actually. Well, I mean, Sawanapur is. I'd say Sawanapur. It's just yeah. newish and uh, quite well laid out. And uh, Krispy Kreme available right before you come back to Phuket. Yep. I, and I've obviously been through Sawanapur many, many, many times. But um, yeah, I, well, I, hmm, I can't really think. I have fond memories of Don Lang. Because I used to come through there on my early trips to Thailand when you know I had the sort of the early love affair with this country. And I just have fond memories of coming in and out of uh, Don Mueang and people standing there waiting for me. <sighs> so, but it's, uh, it, it's quite nice now they've sort of redone it back up again and, uh, and reopened it. But now Sawanapum is just really cool in the way they've got the gates and that, uh, those roofs. Roofs? Roofs are really uh, interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. so wonderful. Nice. Uh, h- how are we doing? Nick, half Apache Indian. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, uh, I, I don't really think so on that one. I'd get... Uh, I'd get... Uh... Suratani Airport has a library. Uh, okay, Suratani Airport. I'm not thinking that it's probably one of the busiest airports in Thailand. But uh, if it has a library, that's good. I'm not sure whether you'd be able to find many English books there, but uh, nice to know. Thank you, Ian. Smaller airports have their charm. I don't know. Chiang Mai Airport was kind of lame, I'm going to say. It's sort of small and provincial. Yeah. And uh, fairly quiet at the moment, sadly. Let's uh, go to another one of the comments. These are comments from uh, people sent in yesterday. So uh, I'm wondering... Okay, Jane asks... I'm wondering if you know the reason why volunteering is included in the no-can-do clauses for retirement visas. Only rationale I can conclude is that all Thai students in Thai schools must complete some service work in their high school years for graduation. I'm not sure if that happens. Well, uh, yes. Legally, officially, you can't work as a volunteer here in Thailand. Uh, This became sort of noted after the tsunami when people flew to Thailand just to sort of help. roll their sleeves up and help. Oh, wow. And Thai police would stop them and saying, where's your work permit? In the middle of a disaster. In the middle of a disaster. It happened. And uh, I think some people were actually sort of arrested. I mean, nothing happened in the long run. But people went, really? You can't volunteer in Thailand? So officially, you're not allowed to volunteer. As to what the reason is, I don't know. It's not as if you're taking work away from Thais. There's not a strong volunteer culture in Thailand. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know um, people from my country, for example, volunteerism is a big thing. And a lot of people would like to come here. uh, Like Habitat for Humanity or something like that. That type of thing. Rather than sitting at a beach resort and uh, using the pool all week, a lot of people come and they'd go to like an elephant sanctuary and work uh, as a volunteer for the week and uh, you know, learn about the place and just get uh, the experiences. But volunteering as such is not uh, legal in Thailand. A lot of people do, but uh, if the police arrived, you'd just say, oh, I'm just a tourist, nothing happening here. The, you can't sort of wear an official badge or anything like that. Uh, so but it does happen and a lot of people do sort of come here and volunteer for various organizations, but there's no legal status. Jason says he'd like to volunteer for quality control at a cannabis farm. <laughs> well, I was going to have a talk about that. In fact, it's in our, uh, what do you call it? The, um, d- just I noticed the cleaner has been going around picking up bits of 
half dead mice, uh, lizards. Uh, with what, sitting, one sitting on your seat this, when you pulled the seat out this morning. Oh, there's a half dead lizard. But we were. Somebody asked a question. Is the question there about the the cannabis? Um, nose behavior, time motorists, clean air, air pollution. No, but I do have one about uh, I'll pedestrian get crossing laws. Okay, pedestrian well, crossing yeah. laws. Uh, but I, I really don't think there was a difference there. I, I can't see any noticeable change in the uh, treatment of crosswalks. They are fair game here. <laughs> uh, yes, there was an incident in February last year when a young female ophthalmologist was mowed down by... Ophthalmologist? Ophthalmologist. What is that? Eye doctor. Oh. Eye okay. surgeon. And she was mowed down by a pol- an off-duty policeman on a Ducati. And uh, he was subsequently uh, arrested and charged. With vehicular manslaughter? Something like that. Okay. <laughs> but uh, she, she was killed. And there was a time for at least a couple of months when the behaviour of drivers at, at pedestrian crossings, because I was working in Bangkok at the time, was different. It had certainly changed. Hmm. There was a, a definite vibe at those crossings which was different from before the incident such that they then started to go around and paint sort of a dark orange color a lot of these pedestrian crossings i've always said that there's no use doing much at road level at these pedestrian crossings you've got to put signs up yeah so the people can see from uh, you know 100 meters back that there's a pedestrian crossing coming up so i haven't been to bangkok for well since last july I'm not sure if that situation, if that change in the thinking in Bangkok is still there, but it was quite different at the time. I haven't read a lot of additional um, incidents at pedestrian crossings lately, Mm -hmm. but in the immediate aftermath of that incident, there was quite a different vibe at the crossings and people were stopping. Wow. I think at least there's a lot more knowledge that that's what you're meant to do. At a pedestrian crossing, you're meant to stop. Uh, I don't know if it's like that now. Here in Phuket, well, I don't really see many pedestrian crossings. Not a lot. People just walk across the road anywhere. I did notice when uh, my father and I were road tripping in England, though. I, I, I'm just generalizing here from what I saw, and we drove all around the aisle. <laughs> um, no one looks before they cross in that country. I'm just going to say it because we took turns driving. And I'm going to say, they just walk out into the road. Well, I, th- I think... <laughs> pedestrian it's, crossing or not. <laughs> oh, okay. It's very concerning. Well, <laughs> yes, if there's a pedestrian crossing, they're legally in the right. If they can sure. Just, uh, close but I mean, sometimes you're driving, and sure enough, I'll see the guy on the side of the road, and I'm thinking, okay, he's looking at his phone, whatever. And they just step out, and I go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're, you're on the footpath and you're standing there, uh, obviously you need to look left yeah. and right. Do we need to acknowledge some of these people who have uh, very kindly donated some money to us? I'm going to say Jorgen D. Jorgen, thank you very, thank you very for much. The, what is that? Money. To the boss, take care in the sun. For a something to the boss. A cap. A cap. Yeah. Okay, I'm actually uh, quite careful these days because I had a few benign skin cancers cut out of my head, uh, what, four or five months ago? Oh, sorry. Is there something yeah. you need to tell me? No, no, there's okay. no, that, that, and the, the, you can't even see where the, they were cut out. Swedish Kronos. Swedish Kronos. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Jorgen D. And uh, I do, when I'm outside, unless I'm out there for like for a minute, but if I'm out there for any time I do have a cap, it's, it's not a cap, it's a, um, it's a hat I got It's a boonie hat. Uniqlo. Huh. It might even be on the desk. Is it over there, the floppy hat? No, it's not. It's yeah. probably in the car. But, uh, yeah, I do. I'm very careful about wearing a hat. My father died from complications of skin cancers. I spent a lot of my youth in the sun, a lot of time sailing when I didn't cover up as much as I should. I do know that it's going to be an ongoing issue for me as I get older. I'm going to have more of these skin cancers to cope with. So it's something I have to be careful with. Okay. Good what were you going to say? Well, I, I don't know anymore. I don't know what, I don't know what to say. <laughs> You're going to do. It's good Thank that you you're. It's good that you're aware and taking care of yourself. Sure. Um, okay. So to another comment okay. or okay. Oh, everyone's saying okay, they had the right away. I understand that, but it's still 
nice etiquette to look both ways before you cross the street. Uh, just yes. for you. I understand that pedestrians have the right of way. I know how traffic laws work. I'm just saying it's nice to look before you cross the street. Yeah, for your own personal yes. safety. Uh, yeah. We used to have a jingle in Australia where we had this person dressed up as a cat or something, and it was, uh, look to the left, look to the right, look to the left again, then if the road is clear of traffic, walk across the road or something. Oh. So I remembered a bit of it, but not all of it, but it was a campaign to educate kids what to do when you get to the side of the road. Because, yeah, kids are the worst. They just I barrel remember one road. time uh, I was in, I think I was in Lugano, Switzerland, and I was waiting to cross the crosswalk, and the pedestrian light had, like, 50 seconds or something on it. And so I looked left, and I looked right, and I looked left again, and no one was coming. And so I crossed the street, and this lady more or less glared at me and called me out saying that I can't do that. Turns out it's a finable offense to cross the crosswalk when the countdown timer hasn't finished be jaywalking because it's jaywalking and I, I don't know as an american we jaywalk everywhere because <laughs> you're in problem you've got a problem with humphrey Peak. what a stupid statement <laughs> regarding people walking out on zebra crossings in the uk without looking that's a stupid I'm just, comment, Nick. I'm just reporting on what I saw in the country while I was there, and it happened more than five <coughs> times, so that's why I'm mentioning it. Humphrey, how should we punish Nick? So are you going to apologize to Humphrey? Um, I don't think so, no. I'm going to stand my ground on this one because I've experienced it, and I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying what I, what I, what I experience. <laughs> so Jim James is very angry with us. He says, put a foam windscreen on your mic and a pop filter. Uh, well, I don't have a. Uh, a pop I use filter. a sock. A so if you cut the top what? of your sock, put it over your. No, head. no, no. You can put it over the microphone, and it kind of does the same thing. Well, yes, it's. So if you're not in the market for a pop filter, you could just use a sock. Yeah, visually they do take up a lot of visual <laughs> space. I'm sorry that we've got a fan just there, but it's really, really hot in here. So uh, turn the bass down on your subwoofer or something. And uh, it, you won't notice it. People I'm sorry. Say it's that. the flannel. Bobby Crutch says I breached the highway code. And Jason says make him eat beans on toast with marmite or uh, marmalade. Marmite. Gorilla Pancake has helped us uh, finish the song. Walk straight across the road. Don't run. Walk straight across the road. Yes, you're absolutely right. That's the words. I think it was Fat Cat who was the uh, the animal they used. That's the washing machine telling us uh, that their load's done, by the way. S uh, Jorgen D says, just sing, Tim, and cars stop. Probably they run away also. It's a road safety. Yes, uh, my singing would do anything to stop traffic. Bring it to a grinding halt. Yeah, sure. Um, and if I can use my bad voice to the good of man to save people from dying in road carnage, then I'm happy to offer it. I don't know. It's just in, in like New York, for example, people jaywalk all the time. It's kind of what you do. I don't know. If, you, if, if I can make my own judgment that no cars are coming and approaching me, I'm going to cross the street. <laughs> I, I'm not going to wait 90 seconds for a thing to tell me to cross the street if there's no cars coming. Just well, do it myself. I have a talk about cannabis in a moment because I did mention it in the thumbnail that it's uh, 10 months now since we've had the decriminalisation of cannabis and what's the current situation. I'll be asking you for your opinion. Uh, we've also got Pat... This comment section isn't very fond of my opinion, but okay. <laughs> uh, Pat Ty uh, says, has anyone been on the Concord? Bring them back pretty please. I was saving up to do a trip from... Uh, the um, from New York to London okay. in the Concorde, and then oh, I was it's really really fast, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's it used like to do it in about three and a half hours. Oh, do they bring it back? No, 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 no. They're not bringing. But you've it done back. it before. That's really cool. I know. I wanted to do oh. it, so I was saving it because it wasn't a cheap trip. It was very expensive. It's like you're paying for a, a basically a first class ticket. Mm -hmm to sit in what's not more than much more than an economy sized seat and it was four across okay uh, and they were served um, you know really good food and it was you're on the concord it was a big thing so i was saving up to do this trip it was the trip of a lifetime then i was going to come back from southampton in england back to new york in the qe2 okay which was the most luxurious um, uh, maritime transport at the time so these were the two 
best ways to travel for my generation at the time, the Concorde and the QE2. Um, I didn't get to do either. Something happened and I ended up, but the Concorde, they stopped flying it, Yes, I think in 2003. And uh, yeah, I just didn't get around to it, which was really sad because that was something that I'd saved up. I had the money and I never got to do that trip. The, the, the problem with the Concorde was it was just very, very expensive. And even though it was an extraordinary design in the 60s, the fact that it was designed with slide rules, it was designed by engineers on pieces of paper, you know, working things out the hard way. There was no computers to, uh, to do all the calculations. If they did supersonic flight now, they'd solve many of the problems, including the sonic boom, because these planes used to take off, and then an hour after takeoff, they're going through the sound barrier, and bang, and you know, used to pop people's windows and do all sorts of things. That's so really cool. The, the, the modern uh, potential supersonic planes are finding ways to get rid of this sonic boom and sort of minimizing it. So they, they banned it from flying across Australia, for example from flying across Europe, uh, the continental United the sonic States, boom. because of the sonic boom. So you could only really... F-22 rappers to the same thing. Well, obviously idling. They, they do them at much high. <laughs> yeah, sure. High but planes. I mean, subsonic idling is pretty cool. So it's interesting that the, <laughs> the planes idling. we fly in at the moment are really not much different from when uh, Boeing came out with the 707, mm -hmm. uh, which was in the late 50s. And it had the it had four engines at the time, and uh, the size of the fuselage was about the si same size as a, a 737, three across three across a single aisle. And uh, but since then, that aspiration with the, the wings and the engines under the wings and the, the look of the plane and the tail and the uh, empennage at the back, that really hasn't changed ever since the late 50s. The materials got lighter, the engines got much more efficient and much bigger, and uh, there, there's been other sort of incremental changes, but the fundamental design of planes hasn't changed. I would love there to be supersonic flights again. Uh, to do those long journeys, it would just cut them down by uh, half or a third. The longer the journey, the more time you save. So uh, yeah, bring them back, I, I would save up. For, uh, to fly in a supersonic plane if they were coming back uh, for commercial aviation. That's what I think. Nice. Forget fast planes. I could see Tim working as a bingo host on a cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> that might be where I finish up. Yeah. Uh, wow, B-42. <laughs> you know, you've got to say all the funny lines in there as well to make it even mildly interesting. Uh, Paul uh, Sumner asks, have there been any noticeable dread detrimental effects to the decriminalization of cannabis? An increase in crime or other impacts? Well, that, that's, uh, that was, I think, one of the questions that somebody sent in yesterday that you missed. Um, Sorry. Nick, what's wrong with you today? Didn't show up when I was copying the questions. So that's a good question. What has happened? You know, the sun is still rising in Thailand each day. Uh, the tourists are still arriving. A completely different mix of tourists. We have seen uh, a few stories from time to time, and they usually involve academics arguing about uh, the, the various potential merits of cannabis versus some of the, uh, the problems, the health problems, and some of the uh, perceived potential psychological problems. So we've seen plenty of those arguments. We've seen some stories uh, mostly about young children uh, being found using cannabis uh, and then of course everybody getting all sort of overwrought about that particular situation. Certainly if you go to the tourist areas, really hard to walk down the street. Uh, you probably don't have to go 50 metres from the Stone Crab pub to find cannabis being sold in retail stores mm -hmm. at a place like Nihan. I call it Nihan. I know you call it Rawai. Nihan struck right Rawai. there on the border. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. Look, the sun is still coming up. Uh, there, there have been some problems, and there's been reports of additional people going, uh, r reporting to hospital with some sort of what has been described as a sort of a cannabis-induced psychosis. And there has been, as I mentioned, <laughs> some of these. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and there's been some of these uh, stories about uh, young kids. 
uh, caught smoking cannabis as well. Peter but, Kim. But generally, hey, let, let, me, let me just finish. Okay, okay. You just saying you want to read them out. Okay, whatever. Sure. <laughs> Do you want to read them out? I just took the train of thought going. Uh, because I did uh, check uh, uh, to see what sort of media coverage there's been. But generally, th- there hasn't been a sort of a, a, a massive cultural change after 10 months to Thailand. But it's been mostly in those tourist zones that it's really become a thing. Is it causing tourists to come here? Well, if it is, it's been a failure because we've only got uh, half or 60% of the number of tourists coming back to Thailand at the moment. And yet it feels so busy. It uh, certainly feels in some overwhelmingly of the, packed. Well, I think Phuket has been really, really busy. Mm-hmm. And I think the numbers were up to about 70% of the, uh, the original traffic. But we're still not at the 100% uh, noted by the, the number of people arriving. And so many of these people are coming from Russia and China. And I think in both cases, they seem less inclined to wander down the streets, go to bars and stuff like that. Yes. They do different things. Yes, it's a new market now. It's completely different. It is a different market. Uh, and are these people the sort of people that want to use cannabis? I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's a thing in China or if it's a I thing in I have had Russia. a couple of Chinese customers ask about marijuana, yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you sell it at your pub? No, we do not. Okay. Because? We're a bar with alcoholic beverages. Are you legally allowed to do it? Uh, I think you need a license. Okay. Yeah. And of course, I think the biggest, but the, the, the biggest problem after ten months, is that the legislation or the guidelines as to what people can do, where they can do it, uh, the age restrictions or any other restrictions are not clear. They've been assumed, but they're not clear. And I think that is by far the biggest problem for the future of cannabis in Thailand. And when the new parliament sits down, I'm pretty sure they'll address it. And one of the things they will be considering, whether you like this or not, will be um, recriminalizing the recreational use of cannabis. I think that's going to happen. And we'll just have an Amsterdam-like then state. It's, well, it's going to be a bit of a mess, yeah. but I think that might happen. We need to thank somebody. Peter Kim, thank you for the 20 US dollars. He says, you guys do a great job. Thank you. And thank you. Yeah, and uh, we get people like uh, Dana Reese who says cannabis is objectively less harmful than alcohol and <coughs> alcohol is legal. I think comparing it to other drugs that are legal or not legal is, is not really useful in the conversation. And it might be something that uh, <coughs> you could even prove, but it, it doesn't help solve the problem. <clears throat> of the legislature needing to sit down and work out rules. And somebody's saying something like, uh, shove the law. Or well, Bobby Crush, you know, good on you, and I hope that makes you feel good. But the thing is that uh, if you're coming to a country, you need to be aware of what the laws are. The laws about cannabis are completely opaque in Thailand at the moment, and people are just sort of doing things depending on what the people around them are doing or what yes. they're being told. Because there's really nothing written down on paper that people need to be aware of. Teddy Boy mentions, might be worth mentioning how one would donate to your program. We don't solicit these kind of things. Who do we have to thank? Peter? And we already did thank Peter Peter Kim. Kim. Thank you, Peter, very much. Thank you, Peter. (laughs) Did he have a question? No, he just said, you guys do a great job. Thank you. Peter, really appreciate that. Uh, Look, we don't solicit uh, donations. Uh, We appreciate when we do a live program. They're part of the way that YouTube has set up its system. Yes. Obviously, uh, very, very grateful and appreciative of anybody that uh, (laughs) thinks we need help. Um, but uh, yeah, look, it does cost money to uh, to do this. Uh, Nick's got extremely expensive tastes. Yeah, I, I just I can't stop myself from going into Louis Vuitton every other weekend. His rider for coming here each morning is got to have the ten Perrier water bottles. Yep, they've got to be set up in a. No, I don't drink way. Perrier. I drink Avian. That's all I drink. Even more expensive. <laughs> So I have to uh, yeah. Yeah, keep people like Actually, Nick yeah, and then he idles the Rolls Royce and keeps the air conditioning on. So when I go back in, it's cool. Now, there, I could turn the air conditioning on here, but um, the problem is it's sitting right above us. And if I turn it on, it sounds like a 747. <clears throat> so it's very, very, very loud. If you're complaining about the fan. <laughs> Bob B worse. mentions to bring back the death penalty. Well, look, I don't think that's going to happen. And look, there has definitely been a um, 
a change in the way that Thailand is going to deal with cannabis in the future. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be recriminalized. I'm pretty sure that they're going to keep promoting the medicinal uses and the agricultural value of hemp. But I, I predict, I don't know, just the way that I sort of read the tea leaves, that there is going to be a recriminalization of an open recreational use of cannabis that was never actually legalized in the first place, but it was assumed by people. And the police don't have any specific laws they can apply to reprimand to, to reprimand people. So it continues and it will continue in that sort of wild, wild west way uh, for the foreseeable future until the next Thai parliament can sit down and nut out a cannabis bill. Jason Finch asks, when are the casinos coming? Live poker in Thailand would be nice. I'd like to say that if casinos were to be brought and be able to use by the Thai people, I don't think it'd be very beneficial because we already know that a lot of them enjoy a bit of gambling here and there. And there is already a local lottery system in a lot of Thai towns and villages and places. It's lottery day today. Yeah, and I don't think it'd be very beneficial to the working population to have that. Maybe to tourists, because I think they're still opening the one in Bangkok. Uh, opening a casino. Yeah, a casino. Uh, nothing confirmed. Okay. <clears throat> they're actually talking about opening some sort of casino oh, in, a, in a party. Hi, <laughs> oh, Dusty. Or Phuket being some of the most popular tourist zones. But they were talking about uh, only for foreigners. Yeah. And uh, saying that the Thais wouldn't be able to visit, which I think would be a sort of a, a reverse system of um, the two pr- two tiered pricing. They're saying that foreigners can come and throw their money at the casino, but the Thais can't. Is, uh, would that be even legal? <laughs> and thank you very much to Jorgen D. I think uh, we've Some got another 27 kroner. Avian water. <laughs> Avi- isn't it Evian? Evian like E-V-I-A-N. I think it's Swiss. Evian. Yeah, Evian water. The Graham. Dogs. Graham? Graham Alward. I recognize that last name. Is, if Songkran is Thai New Year, why doesn't the year number change in April? Also, why does any other country in the world celebrate slash shut down for three New Year's? Oh, I think you mean about the days that we celebrate it. Well, the, yes, the year Thailand's does change. got the Western New Year, the Christmas New Year. Yes. It's got the Chinese New Year. And the Thai New Year. And the Thai New Year. Yes. And they're all big celebrations here in Thailand. The Thais love celebrating just about everything. Uh, yes. For sure. Are there any other countries that have three New Years? I don't know. And Bobby mentions that Thailand is 400, uh, sorry, 543 years ahead of the Common Era, Anno Domini, or Domini. So the year 2023 CE corresponds to BE 2566, which is Thailand's year. Yes, they've got the, uh, the Buddhist calendar. <clears throat> My computer, no matter what I do, I've got it talking in English now, which is good, but I can't change the dates back to the Western calendar. Oh, so it's all Thai. So all the dates uh, are always, when I do Google searches, are all in Thai. Uh, <laughs> sorry, in the, the Buddhist years. Uh, being frank on Ipswich Town question, what do you think of the name of the new main railway station in Bangkok? Is it easy? Is it an easy name for Farangs to remember because it's called Krung Tep? Happy what? Krung tep. It, krung tep api what? Al <laughs> api. It's not happy what. Uh, krung tep api what? Uh, well, I'll look, I think a lot of um, foreigners will just call it the Bangkok Railway Station, won't they? Yeah. And lots of people are typing one in the chat, so that way uh, you can smoke a spliff on screen. <laughs> a question, do a lot of people get sick after Songkran? Look, a lot of that water being fired into your face, I would hate to think where it's come from where it's been sucked up from uh, probably in some cases from the ground and bleh. so i would think there would think be a few a people a with pansy that. about it i <laughs> what i think you're being a little bit of a pansy oh really yeah so i i think um there well there, there are will be some people with some eye irritations today yes don't you it's all right. I don't really care. <laughs> there you go. Doesn't care. Bangsu. Uh, Bangsu was the name, but they changed it to Krung Tep Uh So it's not the Bangsu Railway Station or, a, anymore. 
uh, Bangkok Central Bangkok Central Railway Station. Yeah, look, it's going to be named all sorts of things. Uh, look, a, a lot of people call Sawanapu Airport Bangkok Airport. Well, some people call it Savannabumi. I've heard some Australians say Savannabumi. It's so how it's, it's sort funny. of spelled. Yeah. Uh, Savannabumi. Yeah. Sawanapu mm. is how Graham, it's pronounced. Graham, I'm so sorry if I'm not pronouncing this right. Uh, he asks, which university are you going to in the UK, Nick? I'm going to Lancaster University in Lancashire. Uh, about an hour north of Liverpool and Manchester, right before the Lake District. And It'll be very cold. I like the cold. I'm tired of this hot weather. I don't like sweating. I don't like perspiration. I don't like the y hot. Y yet you wear a... Because uh, it makes really? me feel like I'm somewhere else. <laughs> it reminds me that there's cold out there somewhere in the world, and I enjoy it. So uh, somebody asked that we should have a, uh, a poll asking a cannabis yes or no the, the problem is that that's not really a question whether you like using that herb or not is of no interest to me at all it's only of interest to you and the, the question should be about uh, whether Thailand should have cannabis yes or no uh, whether the recreational use should be legal yes or no the questions need to be much more nuanced and really, uh, having a poll amongst our viewers is not really a, a, of much value. Um, it, it's just one of those things. For the people that like using cannabis, they will continue using it, I'm sure. Uh, and they'll find a way of getting it uh, like they did before. And for those people that don't like using it, well, then you're not going to change their mind either. So I think uh, I'm not going to have a poll about it. Apart from anything else, by talking about it today, I've risked being demonetized for today's program which is uh, a big problem because i have to make some money i've got to feed these cats where uh, dusty go ross asks the water leaves white residue what is it they put baby powder and or that like icy icy hot kind of powder into the water prickly heat like prickly heat yeah Ooh. and it may, and it leaves this really intense cold sensation after it's been applied and that is the white residue that is left over it's powder yes yeah. and if you get that in your eye that stings yes so yes, uh, that stings. <laughs> yeah and uh, let's see here Paul Sumner uh, mentions enjoy my suntan because I won't get one in Lancaster I'll be going to Spain enough to maintain it it'll be okay <laughs> And George asks, what was the first flag of Thailand? Most folks don't know. I'm assuming it's the green one with an elephant on it. Before they adopted the red, white, and blue flag that we know today, it was a green, dark green flag with an elephant on it. Keep talking, I'll find it. That's what I think, because I watched a video about the history of it. If not, okay, shame on me. Du, 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 du. No, it's, du, du, du. it's not showing me. It's just showing me the, the, the <laughs> red, white, and blue. Flags of Siam. It's, no, it just looks like the red, white, and blue one to me. I can't find any earlier oh, flags. Oh, was it red with an elephant? Oh, there we go. Is that the one? Oh, but I was, I was thinking of a different one. It was dark. Oh, no, maybe it was red with an elephant. Okay, maybe, maybe I'm colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you are. Uh, I thought it was green with an elephant. Maybe it's red with an elephant. down. I'm trying... The ensign of Siam, uh, where are we? So it might be this. This is the state flag of Siam. It's 1916 19, 19, to 1917. This uh, is 1817. It became uh. Thailand in 1932. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, and that's the current flag we have at the moment. So uh, there are all the different flags that uh, Thailand's, these are obviously the emblems. Well, wait a minute, what was the first one then? Siam, 1855, 1870, so this one, I guess. I got an elephant, close enough. <laughs> it's an elephant anyway. So there we are, flags of Siam. S Siam, whatever, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, we better do uh, three more comments. One from Rogo says the TU, that's the Tupolev, 144 was faster. Yeah, the Russians did a thing called the Konkordsky, which uh, looked almost identical to the Concorde, but it was a noisy, dangerous, useless piece of uh, machinery that only flew for a very short time and got trashed, had a number of crashes. Oh. Uh, was, um, yeah, it was... 
a very poor copy of the Concorde. I guess they'd use that to go from like Vladivostok to like Moscow really quickly. It's a pretty big country, Russia. Yeah. Is, so the the a Concorde supersonic plane would have been very useful in mm-hmm. Russia, but uh, their version, this Tupolev one four one four four, was uh, well, what I've read about it was uh, not a very good piece of engineering, and. Uh, not flown anymore. In fact, it was uh, they stopped them flying many, many years before they stopped flying the Concorde. Okay, a couple. Steve Ross posted a great video yesterday explaining the background of Songkran. So uh, yes, Steve Ross is my co-host on Sundays <laughs> with Grumpy Old Men. Somebody was suggesting during the week that you should be uh, become part of the Grumpy Old Men the program. Grumpy young man. And I said that uh, he qualifies in the grumpy stakes. I do have a lot of things I'd like to talk about. But, but he doesn't have the, the, the wrinkles. <laughs> Another 40 years, you'll be a grumpy old man. Be a grumpy old... 40? I'll only be... I'll only be 58. Well, ah, still, so you could be getting close. I'll still be having fun when I'm 58. <laughs> no doubt. The party does not end yet. <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, someone made an interesting comment that if you were to fly the Thailand flag upside down for like international distress it doesn't work because it's the same thing what, but what like when people protest about something right sometimes they'll fly their flag's country upside down to mean that something's wrong oh yes 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 but if you do it with thailand's flag hmm. nothing happens no no it would be a, a problem was that a in was that a design was that an intentional design i'm pretty sure it isn't <laughs> but uh yes you're right um, I think we're coming to a natural end here because um, someone asked, uh, "Is what's the best um, hangover cure?" And the Austrian man who helped uh, co-create Red Bull drank Kratting Dang and said that it helped reduce his heat stroke-like symptoms and his hangover. And he wanted to recreate the flavor of Kratting Dang and market it to European customers. So he brought it back to Austria, where he added carbonation to the beverage and produced Red Bull. So Red Bull is a hangover cure? It's a tincture that was originally made, I guess, for like heat exposure and similarly hangovers. It's got a lot of caffeine in it. Of course, and I think it's kind of what kills it, but yeah. And you know, that's why it's called Red Bull because it came from Kratting Dang, which is the OG, if you will, beverage. And it's got a lot of sugar in it as well. Yes. (laughs) So if you want uh, lots of sugar, I'm sort of on a pretty much no sugar diet these days. Uh, it has helped a lot. Is it keto? No, no, no. Just really just eliminating sugar. That's pretty much. Otherwise, I'm eating, well, eating healthy. Make sure I get my vegetables and my fruit every day. But no sugar has helped a lot. Um, weed really takes the edge off a hangover, says Bayou Tom on The Loose Again. And uh, somebody asked me if I dream in black or white or color. I dream in color. I don't really dream. <laughs> I think you do. You just don't remember. Probably, but it's been a while since I've remembered. Too much Red Bull. That's what's causing that. (laughs) All right. So uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, Really appreciate the fact that you've uh, taken the time to watch. I don't know. Have we helped answer a few things today? Visa volunteering question. That was pretty helpful. We did that. We sort of gave a bit of a rundown on the current cannabis situation 10 months down the track. Yep. The first one was about Songkran and... The year of the change and the Thai Prime Minister ch- uh, celebrating. Um, other than that, do um, it questions <laughs> coming in about Russia? Oh, he's he's typed it in three times now. Do we four just times? Read that? Okay, sure. H A asks: Do Russian will Russians not be able to d- dodge the draft now, and s- will there no longer be new Russian draft dodgers in Thailand? Well, a percentage, not a large percentage, but a percentage of the people coming to Russia are young men who are probably doing what I would do. They did just pass a, a law, though, it's making it really difficult for people to dodge that, I believe. Yeah, I, I'm, um, I'm not sure. Okay. Look, I don't really think many of us understand uh, exactly what's going on in, uh, in Russia at the moment. A lot of the media coming out of that country is uh, heavily skewed towards uh, support. Well, no. Things like <laughs> RT. I mean, uh, uh, this, this will get them going. RT is the same as Fox News. 
That's where I get segment. all my. That's where I get yeah, all my information from. I actually RT. like Infowars. Infowars has got to be my favorite media channel. Yes, Infowars, yeah. very accurate. Very accurate. Is he still mm-hmm. going? Probably yes. Okay. <laughs> and Jorgen, thank you very much for the twenty-seven Swedish kronos. Uh, saying bye, Jorgen. You're bye, Jorgen. Very mm-hmm. generous. You're a, a gentleman, and uh, we highly appreciate your support of mm-hmm. our um, of our program. Yeah. Time to go. So, yeah. so um, um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We've got our second load of washing on the go. The cleaner is uh, still moving around the house, doing the weekly cleaning. This is what happens on Saturday mornings now. And uh, thank you all very much. Hopefully, we've been able to discuss important issues. And we even tried to solve the problems of the fires up in northern Thailand. Yep. So if the Prime Minister of Thailand and the, uh, the head of the junta in Myanmar or the uh, president of the communist government in Laos would like to contact us, we'll Feel pass free. on we'll pass on all our comments. lines are open and our operators are standing by. If you call now we'll double your offer. Uh, you're <laughs> diving today or you got the day off? No, I got the day off because and of you. you'll be working in the pub tonight? Probably not because I have to dive tomorrow. Okay, so they this is your full time job now? Yeah. Okay, well, good luck with that. Thank you. Uh, Good luck to all of you. Uh, If you're having a sort of a remnant of a Songkran weekend here in Thailand, uh, be safe. Be aware that tomorrow the roads coming back into Bangkok will be packed to the gunnels. And people heading uh, out of Phuket back to their homes as well. So it's been uh, great. We'll, We'll cut that first part of the program off. Tomorrow we've got grumpy old men. And then Monday to Friday... Uh, just me rabbiting on about the Thai news. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for letting me on the show. (laughs) And uh, I'll think about next week. Uh, We'll see you later. Thanks for joining us. Bye.